In this video, I'll be taking you through the best wireless file sharing apps for Linux that actually work. We Linux users have been dreaming about buttery smooth file sharing between devices that just works, you know something like AirDrop for years now. So I went on a research to hunt down the best wireless file transfer tools on Linux and I finally found the answer. Actually three answers. Local send for lightning fast transfers that work across every platform. Sync thing for automatic folder synchronization that ditches the cloud entirely. And then there's this third tool that honestly blew my mind. It turns your phone into a wireless extension of your desktop. Notifications, clipboard sync, remote control, the whole package. This insane app made me wish I started using it sooner. In this video, I'm breaking down all three tools, showing you exactly how they work and helping you pick the right one for your workflow. Let's jump right in. All right, let's start with the simplest and fastest of them all, local send. This is your foundational tool, your go-to for quick one-time file transfers. Think of local send as airdrop, but for everyone. It doesn't care if you're on Ubuntu, Android, an iPad, or even Windows. It just works. And the best part, your files never touch the internet. Everything stays local, everything stays private. Here's a real world scenario. It's morning, I'm editing a YouTube thumbnail on Ubuntu and I want to preview it on my Realme Android phone before uploading. With LocalSend, this is ridiculously simple. I open LocalSend on both devices. They auto-discover each other instantly. I drag the PNG file, hit send and boom, it's on my phone. That was 8 megabytes in under 2 seconds. No cloud detour, no compression, no waiting. LocalSend uses your Wi-Fi network like a private highway. On Wi-Fi 6, you're looking at speeds between 20 to 80 megabytes per second. That's faster than Bluetooth, faster than most cloud uploads, and in many cases, more reliable than AirDrop itself. Now, I feel like this is a must-have app for like absolutely everyone, because it's extremely useful and simple. You don't need to configure anything, pair anything, or set up sync folders. You just need to send this file right now. Screenshots, PDFs, videos, project files, whatever you want moved from here to there, LocalSend handles it. And it works beautifully across the board. I've tested it on my Ubuntu desktop, my Realme X, even my iPad. Yeah, on iPad, you need to keep the app open to receive files. Apple's usual background restrictions. Still, flawless. Linux to your smartphone, smartphone to Windows, Windows to Linux, yeah. It all just works. Installation is dead simple. Snap on Ubuntu, Flatpak on any other distro, Play Store on Android, App Store on iPad. The links are given in the description below. The app stores make this a one-click affair. And there's also a web version which lets you quickly send and receive files without installing anything. LocalSend is open source, completely free and has zero tracking. It's built with Flutter, so the experience is identical across every platform. No second class citizens here. This is your universal quick send tool. It's the foundation of your wireless file transfer system and it's the one I reach for first every single time. Okay, now we move on to something more powerful, something more integrated, that is KDE Connect. And this is where things get really interesting. Local send is great for sending files in a Jiffy. KDE Connect, it makes your phone and your Linux desktop feel like one device. It's not just about moving files anymore, it's about full integration. Here's the idea. Your smartphone is sitting on your desk, a message comes in. With KDE Connect, that notification pops right here on your Ubuntu desktop. You can read it, you can reply to it, all without touching your phone. Your hands stay on the keyboard, your workflow stays unbroken. Let me show you what this looks like in action. I've got KDE Connect installed on both my Ubuntu machine and my phone. Actually, if you're using the GNOME desktop, you install GS Connect extension instead of the KDE Connect app on your desktop. Both are the exact same applications. KD Connect integrates with Plasma Desktop while GS Connect integrates deeply with the GNOME Desktop. So I installed the GS Connect version here. You have to understand this distinction. Installation is straightforward. Instructions are given in the description below. Get it from the Play Store on Android. You pair them once and they stay connected whenever they are on the same Wi-Fi. It's also available on iOS. So here's the first demo. A message arrives on my phone, voila, it shows up on my desktop. I can type a reply right here using my full keyboard and it goes out through my phone. I never picked it up. This is how phone desktop integration should work. Now let's talk clipboard sync. This is honestly my favorite feature. I get two-factor authentication code on my phone. I tap to copy it. Now I just hit Ctrl plus V on my desktop and there it is. The code moved from my phone to my computer instantly. No emailing yourself, no manually typing six digits. It just works. KD Connect also handles media control beautifully. Say you're watching a YouTube video on your desktop and a phone call comes in. 
KD Connect automatically pauses the video. When the call ends, you can resume. It's that level of thoughtfulness that makes this tool feel premium. You can even use your phone as a remote control, full keyboard and mouse support baby. Presentation mode, media controls or even wireless touchpad for your PC. If you got a home theater setup, this is gold. KD Connect isn't just about files, it's about making your Android phone and your Linux desktop communicate at a system level. Notifications, clipboard, SMS, battery status, file browsing via SFTP, it's all here. If local send is a bridge, KD Connect is a six lane highway with rest stops. One thing to note, KD Connect shines on Android. It's the gold standard for Linux plus Android integration. On my phone, it runs in the background flawlessly. Notifications, clipboard sync, everything works exactly as you'd expect. I also installed KD Connect on my iPad and it works for basic file transfers and remote control features. But Apple's background restrictions mean things like notification syncing and clipboard sharing only work when the app is open on screen. For Ubuntu plus Android, KD Connect is unbeatable. It turns your phone into a wireless peripheral for your desktop. Your notifications show up here, your clipboard syncs here, you remote control your PC from your phone. It's seamless and it's powerful. Once you start using it, you'll wonder how you ever worked without it. And it's open source, completely free and requires no account or cloud login. Everything stays local, everything stays private. By the way, if you haven't already, check out my course Linux Mastery Express. I've designed this course to level up your Linux skills very quickly. With this course, you'll get so comfortable using the terminal commands that your friends will think you're a Linux wizard. You'll get perfect with the most used, most useful commands and also learn advanced things like using the vEditor and shell scripting as well. Linux Mastery Express, link in the description, do check it out. Okay, now we level up to something completely different. Sync thing. Yes sir, I'm bringing out the big guns. Local send is for quick transfers. KD Connect is for phone desktop integration. Sync thing. Sync thing is for keeping entire folders perfectly synchronized across all your devices automatically, forever. No cloud, no middleman, just your devices talking directly to each other. Here's the core idea. You don't send files with sync thing. You set it up once and then your devices just stay in sync. You have a document on your desktop and seconds later it's on your laptop. You take a photo on your phone and it appears on your desktop automatically. There's no send button. The files just exist everywhere. Think of it like quantum entanglement. You have two identical folders on two different devices. When you change something on one, it magically appears in the other. That's sync thing. Talk about using a simple example. Yeah. Now, why would you use this instead of Dropbox or Google Drive? Two reasons, privacy and ownership. With SyncThing, your files never touch a third-party server. They travel directly from your device to your device, encrypted end-to-end. -end. If Dropbox shuts down tomorrow, you're screwed. If SyncThing shuts down tomorrow, your setup keeps running forever. You own the data, you own the infrastructure. By the way, this is completely open source. Now, let me show you how this works in practice. I got a folder on my Ubuntu desktop called SyncThing. Inside, I've got a PDF, thumbnail drafts, stuff I'm currently working on. I want this exact folder on my phone and I want them to stay identical without me lifting a finger. I install SyncThing on both devices. On Ubuntu, it's available on the App Center, but it's available as a snap and snaps have sandboxed permission restrictions, so it don't work that smooth. So I'd rather you install it using the sudo app install command, but you need to add the repository. You know, just copy paste the commands given in the description below. On my phone, I grab the SyncThink fork from Play Store. I open the web interface on my desktop. SyncThink runs locally and gives you a clean web GUI at localhost 8384. I add my phone as a device by verifying its ID. Now I create a shared folder, point it to Sync and tell SyncThink to sync it with my computer. Done. It looks complicated initially, but just read calmly with attention and it's actually simple. From this moment on, any file I add, edit or delete in that folder gets mirrored instantly. I save an image on my desktop and within seconds, it's on my phone. I'm not sending it, it's just there. That's the magic. Now here's what makes SyncThing technically brilliant. It doesn't transfer entire files every time you make a change. It uses something called delta syncing. SyncThing breaks files into blocks and when you edit a file, it only sends the blocks that changed. So if I modify a 2GB video project file, SyncThing isn't re-uploading 2GB. It's sending maybe 10 MB of changed data. Massive bandwidth savings. And because it's peer-to-peer, -peer, if you have three devices and they're all online, they'll exchange blocks with each other like a BitTorrent swarm. Your phone can grab blocks from your desktop and your laptop simultaneously. It's ridiculously efficient. Security-wise, SyncThing is bulletproof. Every connection uses TLS encryption with perfect forward secrecy. 
every device has a unique cryptographic id and you have to manually approve each device before it can connect no one is getting into your sync network unless you explicitly allow them Synthink also has file versioning built in. If you accidentally delete something or a ransomware attack encrypts your file, Synthink can keep older versions. You can set it up to keep hourly snapshots, daily snapshots, weekly snapshots, basically a decentralized time machine. This has saved me more than once. Now let's talk about the platform situation because it's a bit messy in 2025. On Linux, Synthink is perfect. It's the native home. You can run it as a system service, a user service, and you get full control. You can use ST ignore files to exclude stuff like node modules or cache directories. It's rock solid. On Android, there's a bit of drama. The official app was discontinued in 2024. The community maintained SyncThink fork is what everyone uses now, but it recently changed hands and there are concerns about supply chain security. Also, you'll need to disable battery optimization for the app, especially on Samsung or Xiaomi phones because they love killing background processes. On iOS, it's rough. Apple's restrictions make native SyncThink app impossible. There is a third-party workaround called Mobius Sync, but it's limited. You have to manually open the app for it to sync, and it can only access specific sandboxed folders. If you are heavily invested in the Apple ecosystem, SyncThink is going to frustrate you. But if you are on Linux and Android or Linux and Linux or Windows, SyncThink is unbeatable. It's the gold standard for private, decentralized file synchronization. You set it up once and then your devices just stay in sync. No subscriptions, no storage limits, no one watching your data. It just works and it works forever. Yeah, those are the three tools. Locals and for quick transfers, KDE Connect for phone desktop integration and SyncThink for automatic folder sync. Now here's the thing, I personally use KDE Connect the most, it's just so feature rich. Once I set it up, I can reply to my messages from my desktop, my clipboard syncs between devices, and my phone becomes this wireless remote for my PC. It just works and it makes my workflow seamless. I also used SyncThink in the past to sync my Obsidian Vault across devices and it was rock solid. Set it once, forget it forever. These three tools are on different levels. One is for quick file transfers while other one is for complex workflows. You gotta pick these tools according to your use cases and needs. But I think that most people would benefit the most with KDE Connect because it obviously does what local centers, but it does a lot more. It gives you that modern integrated computing experience from your devices. So here's my challenge for you. This weekend, set up KDE Connect. Seriously, it takes maybe five minutes to install and pair and the value you get is just insane. All the installation commands and links are in the description below. Get it running and I promise you'll wonder how you ever lived without it. And I want to hear from you, which of these three tools are you most excited to try? Local send for quick transfers, KD Connect for full integration or SyncThink for automatic sync? Drop a comment and let me know your setup. Alright, if you found this video useful, if you enjoyed it, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and also leave me a big thumbs up. And if you're interested in leveling up your Linux skills, the link to my course Linux Mastery Express is given in the description below. It's designed to teach you Linux and take you from zero to hero in the shortest time possible. You'll be using Linux Seeker Pro within a matter of hours, so definitely check that out. Next up, check out the top 15 hottest hacks that will supercharge your Linux desktop performance to the next level and truly unlock your Linux. It's got some really cool tweaks, so definitely don't miss that. Alright, this is Linux Tech signing out.